the ball go in again. It's good to see Herb Jones back to uh, a lot closer to 100%. He's still not quite 100, but man, he looked a lot better. So that was good. He makes our offense a whole lot better when Herb's playing explosive like he was. You know, defensively, we weren't as good as we wanted to be, but that's a good offensive team. I mean, Wheeler get the ball in the paint. You know, they, they didn't shoot it particularly well, which obviously helped us, but the, uh, you know, we, we shot it well. We got to the free throw line, made free throws, made threes. You know, outside of the turnovers on offense, I thought our offense was pretty good. Uh, you know, they're a really good offensive rebounding team. I think we held them to 28%, you know, offensive rebounding rate, which is lower than their average by a lot. So even though we gave up quite a few old boards, I, it wasn't as bad as they had been beating other teams on it, but it still wasn't quite good enough. So we, we got some work to do yet. Uh, A&M's, you know, looming out there Wednesday. They're, they're a really good defensive team. You know, we're going to have to be better on defense before A&M, but really happy for the guys. I mean, you know, 115, so I guess it's the SEC record for points in a game. You know, I thought Darius, you know, that dunk he put down at the end. I mean, we, we know how talented that kid is. You know, we're just trying to get him to put it all together. So I was really happy to see him, you know, be able to do that. I thought just a lot of guys shot the ball well. You know, you look, JQ was four for four. So the last three games, he's been shooting it really well. Shaq got back on track, over 50% from three. Herb was three of four. He's over 50% on the year. Primo came out with 19 in the second half. It was huge. He goes three of four. So, you know, it's a feel good win, but we definitely got some work to do on the defensive side of it. Thank you, Coach. We'll take questions now. Let's start with Drew DeArmond. Yeah, Coach, I wanted to ask you about the second half for Josh Primo. Uh, it was big, had 19 points. I know he's been struggling a little bit, but as you said, it was good to see the ball go in the hole for everyone, but especially him. Talk about uh, his performance tonight. You know, he struggled early, had the foul trouble, didn't really get it going in the first half, but. You know, he came out aggressive. That's what we like to see. He's attacking the rim. And then, you know, I feel like when he's aggressive, you know, coming downhill, attacking, when, you know, it, he can't let guys just close out and get into him. If they close out that hard because they know he's a shooter, he's got to be able to make the plays off the dribble. So I think he's getting better at that. You know, we're seeing his game grow. I don't know if they close out short. I mean, he's making shots. He's one of the best shooters on the team. And we got a lot of good shooters on the team. And he's right, right up there at the top. So really happy for him. And good, good. You know, a freshman, middle of February, sometimes they, they hit a wall a little bit. Maybe he hit one a little bit before, but he, he's pushing through it. He's a workhorse. He's in the gym working a lot, and he's he's all about the right stuff. So happy to see him play well. Charlie Potter, you're next. Hey, Coach, you mentioned Herb in your opening, but was this the healthiest you've seen him in a while? Just what are your thoughts on his play tonight? Yeah, easily. I mean, it's the best he's played since he took the initial fall. So and that's what we kept saying, you know, like, he had to, he has to get the rust off. Like it, it's great to just say, let's sit him, but sitting him doesn't get him any better that, you know, it, it prevents a, another hit to it. The only thing that was setting him back was if he'd have taken a hit to it. And he hasn't taken a hit for the last three or four games, but he did need to get some rust knocked off him for not playing so long or not practicing. So we just felt like let's get him back to doing full speed drills, you know, individual skill drills. Let's try to get it as hard as we can close to game speed without going live in practice. And then let's let them keep playing because it, whenever you were, you know, if, if you did sit him, whenever you'd have brought him back, he had to play a few games to knock the rust off. Like it'd be nice if he didn't have to knock the rust off when he did hit a hundred percent, which is what we're hoping for now. Mike Rodak. Yeah, Nate certainly ended the game on an aggressive note with uh, the Miles dunk, and I think he came back down the court there again and tried to dunk. I know on TV they speculated that you were trying to apologize to, to Tom Crean that you went over to him. Just what was the situation? So what I told them, what I told our guys, like we've had issues with the guys closing the games out with turnovers. So I told them, look, it, once it got under 30 where, you know, the shot clock where you didn't have to shoot, I said if, you know, dribble it out, don't take a shot, unless they're pressing into you. If they're pressing into you, then just, you know, go by and make a play. Like, you know, if they're going to keep – it's kind of one of those deals. If they're going to keep playing hard on D, trying to get steals, then still play offense. So we're not turning the ball. We had enough turnovers on the game anyway. So Darius did exactly what I told him to do. You know, they uh, they pressed up into him at half court, so he went by. So I went and told Tom, I was, you know, 
and I got a lot of respect for him. You know, like I said, I worked his camps back when he was at Marquette, you know, going to the Final Fours. I, you know, followed him closely at Indiana when I was a high school coach. So he's a Michigan State guy. I got a ton of respect for Michigan State, and he was great. I said, look, you know, Tom, I, I told him to dribble it out unless they pressed into us, you know, uh, you know, and he just kind of he said no, no, no problem. So I, I wanted to make sure he knew I wasn't trying to run the score up. But we also, I mean, you guys have seen us close games out with that crew out there before, and it was disastrous. And I, I hate to see us close games out like that. Uh, so better, way better finish to the game. This is the first game since I've been here that we've won all ten four minute battles. From what my staff feeds me uh, on the four minute battle sheet. So you know, we were trying to win. Usually, you know. Sometimes we set it as a goal to win eight out of 10. You may have a couple bad ones shooting, but I, they told me we won all 10 out of 10. So it was nice we won the last one, didn't let up, played hard through the end of the uh, clock. Cecil Hart. It seemed even in the first half you had, you had worried about starts. Um, and it was, I guess, 10 to 10 at the first media. But uh, the ball seemed to be moving better, moving around better offensively. Um, so – did you feel like the start was was better? What you were looking for? A lot better on offense. Defensively, we just we were just a little off for large parts of the game, and I didn't like our start defensively. But offensively, we weren't turning the ball over. Three out of four possessions. You know, we had some pretty good looks. You know, I. I but yeah, I shoot being even after the starts we've had for the last few games. Uh, you know, it's great. I thought I can't. Was it ten ten at the end of the first media? Did we not win all 10 of those? It was uh, maybe we tied. Maybe we didn't lose one. Maybe that was what they told me. All right, we got three more questions in the queue here. We'll finish with these three. Let's start with Scott Griffin. Hey, Nate, I don't think I've ever seen a box like this. Disregard the turnovers, but offensive efficiency, 19 assists on 36 mates, but 115 points and nobody had double-figure shot attempts. Yet five guys have, what, seven, at least seven really balanced besides the assist. Yeah, I didn't realize that till you just said it. That is pretty crazy. Nobody shot more than uh, nine times we scored 115. It, it helps when you make threes and you got a lot of guys that can make threes. I mean, you go down the list, you know, you look like Quinterly four for four. Primo and her both three for four. You know, uh, Shaq two for three. You know, even, I mean, Keon Ellis was 50%, one for two. Darius Miles, one for two. Reese, you know, Reese was one of our off guys at one for three tonight. J JP was one of our uh, slow guys at three for seven, which is pretty, pretty good. So, I, you know, when we shoot it like that and the ball's moving like it was, you know, I guess that can happen. That is fairly incredible. I, I didn't realize that until you pointed that out. But the 18 turn, if we hadn't turned the ball, I and mean, we were at 1.4, our offensive efficiency on the game, you know, if we, if we would limit the turnovers, cut that 18 down to 12, you know, you'd, been pushing one five, which had been one four is pretty good. One five would have been fairly ridiculous. So yeah, the offense looked a lot better tonight. Go to Janaya Lazenby. Yes. Um. What were some key takeaways from the game tonight? I mean, I, I think you know we were stressing our transition defense. They it was ten zero on fast break points in the first half the wrong way. They had ten, we had zero on the box score. So. For the second half, it ended up 12-6. So I think we did a little bit better in the second half on that. Rebounding was a major factor. They're a really good offensive rebounding team. I thought we did a pretty good job with that. You know, I rebounded them by seven on the game. And then our other big key was kind of keeping Wheeler out of the paint. We didn't do as nearly as good a job of that. You know, he ends up with 16, 16 points. He only did have three assists to four turnovers. So our job on Wheeler was, was you know, kind of average, maybe even below average, to be honest with you. He got a lot of guys in foul trouble. You know, Keon Ellis was guarding him, ends up in foul trouble. But I, I thought that the charge that Herb took, that fouled him out of the game was huge. And it's a Herb Jones type play. I mean, Herb was a monster on defense tonight. He was all over the place. Our team defense was not where it needed to be. But Herb Jones himself, I thought was pretty good. And then, you know, our defense wasn't awful, but it just wasn't what we, we were used to getting from our guys. So to me, that's, you know, and we, the offensive stuff is pretty obvious. We scored 115. I mean, it's an SEC record. We shot 18 out of 30 from three, 25 out of 30 at the line. You know, our, I think our field goal percentage, our three point percentage were season high. So 
yeah, I mean, you can talk about the offensive stuff, but that's pretty apparent. So I, my takeaways were what I just gave you there. All right, we'll finish up here with Joe Goodman. Hey, Nate, do you mind going into your philosophy behind the 10 four-minute battles and how you prepare the team for that? I mean, I think it's one of those deals where you, you don't want to get lost in the, the entire game. If you break it down into every media timeout, you got a four-minute battle. Like, you know, my, my guys give me these – we got them on card stock and we chart all kinds of stuff on defense and offense both. And, you know, I get a defense and offense and a blue-collar one every four minutes, you know, and we're trying to win the four-minute battle, but we're also trying to – how many paint – you know, one paint touch, two paint touch possessions – on, on offense, how many times did we hit the paint in the first six seconds of the clock? How many old boards did we, you know, get on offense? You know, we got a whole list of offensive stuff. I do a quick scan, circle it, whole list of defensive stuff. How many old boards did we give up? How many transition points did we give up? How many blow bys did we give up? How many stops did we have out of how many total possessions? So we're trying to, you know, and then they, they each give me the efficiency numbers. We were, you know, I, I circle that, you know, defense, like guys, we were, at a 1.18 on defense these last four minutes. That, that's, that's awful. Like, we got to get this back down to a 0.8, you know, and, and part of the reason is we gave up three blow buys. So every four minutes when you get the guys back in and the media timeout, we're going through, you know, and the big one tonight was that I wasn't really that happy with was they, they were up on the blue collar. They, they ended up beating us on blue collar points tonight. So, we, which that doesn't happen. Like, we, we last year we charted our own only. This year we chart ours and the opponent's. They, they outscored us on our, our blue collar system. So, you know, we made the point at halftime, we were down on it. We got, and we were down by like 20. So the second half we outscored them, but not enough to win the game. So, you know, that those, the blue collar, the offense, the defense, every four minutes, just kind of evaluating what we think it takes to win games and making sure we're focused on that at every, every four minutes. And we're trying to win every four minutes. If you're, you know, if you just try to win the game, sometimes you can throw away this four minutes, this four minutes, which we've done. I mean, I'm not saying we're anywhere close to where we need to be on all this, but I think it helps keep their focus in on every time you come into a timeout. All right. Thank you, Coach.